In this video, we're going to explore the use of the Survey app. That's a plugin for Scene. So first, we have to activate it. And assuming that you've already loaded it into the uh, list of apps, we would go to Tools, Apps, and then scroll down through your apps. Find the Surveyor. It's already active. If it wasn't, we'd simply check that box and it may blink a couple times and then be active and when it's active this icon comes up on the toolbar and you click on that and that opens up the toolbar for the survey app now what I'm going to demonstrate within this app is the use of the field to finish point uh, picker so that's what I call it point picker and the parameters of the markers that are going to be left behind to show you what you've already picked are down at the bottom of this uh, you can see I hit the gearbox here and then it opens up this survey uh, window and the uh, items that I'm concerned about are the radius of a cone that's going to be placed every place I pick an elevation and how high that cone will be so I'm happy with two tenths at the top and a one foot high cone. So now we click on the uh, tool to activate it and you can call um, whatever you want to call in your field to finish uh, list of descriptors for the points the same way you would in the field uh, you describe what the point is. In this case I'm going to follow the top of curb and I'm going to start at point number 5,000 just for fun. Okay, now make sure that this show Z is not checked because if that's checked, it's going to slow the whole process down trying to put graphically the elevation on your screen. And you don't need to do that because it's going to store all that information and you're going to export it to either an Excel or a um, ASCII file. So let's hit OK and we will zoom in. I'm in ortho view and if you want to change your view you would go to this little icon up here with the window I mean with the eyeball hit it and you would pick ortho instead of perspective perspective I like ortho better because everything's the same scale and I can navigate a little better in that so I'm going to just use my center wheel and zoom in and I'm going to hold the center wheel down and pan and come down onto this curb location here and I'm going to start with this curve there's a little something broken out here it looks like uh, anyway we can zoom in as much as you need to to be sure that you're shooting the top of curb and if you want to take another little look at it uh, hit the radius button here for a pivot point and drop that someplace near where you're working and then using the left mouse key you just grab onto the scene and turn it and look at look at the way this, the curb is shaped so that you're satisfied you know what you're doing and here's this little area that's broken out so we'll probably ignore that like we would in the field anyway so alright here's where we're going to start and we have TC loaded in the field to finish and if I hit my shift key once, it brings up another window, which automatically puts a space between the TC and whatever I type here. So in our field of finish, the TC space BC is the beginning of a curve. I hit OK, and I'm going to select this point right here. So now you see this little cone that I told you about. The uh, I guess it's the radius of the uh, top of the cone and the height. And here's the... Um, description of this point just T C B C and then I'd pick another point here and that would default to the T C now I want the end of the curve so I hit the shift again and I type in E C OK and I click here and then I would move over to the next point uh, the next B C and hit shift again and put in B C and then click on that little BC point right here and then I've got the TCBC and one of the 
points in the middle of the curve and then over here at the EC. Now I'm looking at these uh, scans and something uh, I just wonder what the shape of this really looks like. So right now the tool is set up that if I hold the shift button um, and click here and then click here it's going to analyze this and give me a little cross section of, of right between wherever I clicked. But that takes a little bit of time so I'm not going to do that right now. But it just tells you not to hold the shift key down while you're clicking. Just hit it once and this comes up. Just hit it once and release and then put in your your next description and click on that and then we've got the EC and then we've got a nice long tangent here and we can put something in the middle if we want I just go along every so often Oops, um, I forgot to push the wheel down <laughs> send us on a tailspin so then we uh, click on the TC here Let's take a little check look at that and see if we like that one. Oh, see, I missed, and that's not a good one. So uh, what we do is we just simply undo the last one and then repick it. And there we go. We got a better value here. It's like the rod slipped off the curb. This one looks good. This one looks good. So you can go back and check it and um, change it if you like or delete it. And so we're getting here to the end of this uh, curb and we'll take another radius point here and take a little better look at it and you can see that the curb uh, where does it go? Looks like it it's diving down in here. Looks like there may have been an old uh, driveway in here so we'll just click on this one here but I don't like that because I wanted to put on there um, I want to put on there end because that's really going to be the end of my curb line and then you see it starts again here so if I hit shift and I'm going to put begin because that's going to start a new curb line then I just go about my merry way here and we've got another little let's check this one here we'll grab another little radius point here and look at the curve and you see there's another curve here so we're going to hit the shift and put a BC okay and click double click that is and click in the middle and then we're going to go to the EC and click on the end of the curve, which I'm going to pick with being right there. Oops. Huh. Oh, i got to put EC. Sorry. There we go. Oh, oh, I'm getting several points. That's one of the issues with this. If you're looking too straight down, you can't see where you're clicking. So I'm going to delete that and use the one that I used before. And that's basically how you get the points in. Now, how do you get them out? We're going to go up here and uh, undo this tool. And then we're going to use the export. And I'm going to export it in a point, num uh, point number, northing, easting, elevation, and descriptor. So I like that. And I could transform this uh, if we had clipped off um, the state plane coordinates and cut off the last uh, three digits or the first three digits we could put them back in here if we wanted and we can do the same with the elevation so then I'm going to save this someplace and I'm just going to put it on my desktop and we're going to call this just points and uh, we can call it points one and we're going to hit export it did that successfully and it brings it right up into where we are now I don't want to have this in uh, in Excel I want to rename this and I want to put it into a TXT file because that's the way 
I like to look at it, and it simply changes it into a text file, and here you are. We have the point numbers, we have the northing, the easting, the elevation, and the descriptors. So that's uh, the end of this show.